organizations of all sizes, whether they're SMBs all the way up to enterprise companies, government organizations, NGOs, nonprofits, and consumers alike, that means pretty much everyone in the entire world, uh, will be impacted in one way or another by cyber threats. Uh, it, as digital transformation impacts every single industry, uh, every single thing that we own is networked, which means the scope of threats as well as threat actors can vary dramatically. Uh, for Tech Republic and ZDNet, I'm Dan Patterson, and we're with Bobby Kuzma today. He is a security researcher at Core Security to answer one of the largest questions about, or at least uh, uh, most intriguing aspects of the cybersecurity landscape, and that is zero day bugs. Uh, zero days are uh, holes in code and within connected devices that can allow. Uh, exploitation. Bobby, thanks for joining us today. I wonder if we could demystify zero days a little bit and have you start by explaining what these exploits are and how they work. Well, the at the most basic level, a zero day is a bug that nobody knew about until it started being used in the wild. And these come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Um, there's a variety of different mechanisms, but the, the term zero day is really about the lack of foreknowledge of what's going on. There are bugs that come in so many different um, mechanisms. Some involve corruption of memory, like the classic buffer overflow where you have uh, this size uh, space in memory to fit an input, but an attacker, because of a programming error, they put so much more data into it, it causes the program to write past that, and it allows the attacker to take over uh, the flow of the program. There's other types that are flaws in a protocol where they can infer uh, private information. There may even be uh, like the recent Intel uh, CPU bugs until those were announced. Now those are zero days. There's no fix for them yet. So uh, the most basic level, the zero days are things that we don't have a fix for that the attackers are able to leverage without any kind of mitigation. There's, there's no defense. It's like a new a biological virus or, or plague that we don't have a way of defending against. And the best way that we can fight against these things is not through antivirus. It's not through some kind of product that you go and buy. It's through good practices. It's through this thing that we call defense in depth. It's you know, good practice. Um, so if I understand you correctly, uh, a zero day can vary from system to system, from device to device, from application to application. The consistent theme is that it is a, a bug or an exploit that we have no defense for and may not know about. Uh, so, how are our zero day bugs deployed in uh, practice? How could an attacker use a zero day bug? And in what circumstance would an attacker use a zero day bug? Would they use it to attack an individual, an organization, uh, everyone? How are, these, how are these used in practical application? Well, one of the best case studies of the use of zero day bugs was with Stuxnet. Uh, their uh, the attackers, which were presumably the United States government, uh, used multiple zero-day bugs to uh, get into a particular Iranian facility that was being used to enrich uh, uranium uh, for their nuclear program. And they used not one, not two, not three, but like four different zero-day bugs to ensure that they were going to get in to that facility. And zero-day bugs are valuable 
they take a lot of resources to discover. And because of that, you don't, as the saying goes, burn a zero day just for, for amusement value or for giggles. You have to have a very high value purpose for that uh, to be done. And that's why there's been a lot of debate uh, in public circles about uh, agencies and governments stockpiling zero days uh, for offensive purposes rather than reporting them at, for, so that they can be fixed to defend their own nation's infrastructures. Um, and so there's this huge market both on the black market and in the gray market where researchers are selling zero days to both criminal actors and to governmental organizations because there's huge sums of money being exchanged both openly and covertly for these bugs. I mean, there, there are organizations that'll pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a zero day in uh, flash or uh, up to a million dollars for a zero day in Apple's iOS. There's, there's serious money involved in this, but there's serious resources that have to go into finding these bugs because we're getting better and better at mitigating uh, these types of exploitable vulnerabilities. So the value of the exploit is a finite commodity, uh, or the exploit it itself is a finite commodity. So the value is kind of set regardless as to who the actor is and, and purpose is. Uh, so I wonder if you could tell me where some of these exploits are bought and sold, maybe the mechanics of a transaction. How would a government or a uh, non-state rogue actor acquire a zero-day bug, and from where would they, they buy something like this? Well, there's both open markets for this, and there's more clandestine markets. Um, there, are, there are both commercial actors that openly will purchase, no questions asked, these zero days, and then broker the transactions to government agencies. And uh, there are both exclusive transactions where they'll guarantee that only one organization will be permitted to purchase a particular zero day. And there are non-exclusive transactions. Obviously, the exclusive transactions have higher value, and the non-exclusive transactions will have a lower value attached to them. Um, there are also markets that pop up on the dark web where much more anonymous transactions will take place. Uh, obviously, these are entirely unregulated, but there's also, there's also a complete cottage industry attached to the defense sector where there are feeder companies that exist solely to supply the Booz Allen Hamiltons and the Lockheeds of the world that feed into the NSAs and CIAs and their foreign equivalents, all of these, uh, their stockpiles of what we're you know, calling cyber weapons. They're not all generated inside the government. They're buying them from contractors who in turn are usually buying them from researchers. So there Whether is... Uh, a cottage industry for uh, zero day bugs. I wonder if you could help me understand if I'm a company, should I be fearful of these exploits and, and what types of organizations should uh, uh, fret and stew about these and which, which should uh, uh, are not targets? You know, every organization that uses hardware and software potentially has exploitable zero days in their environment. It's just a factor of using technology. And you know that they're going to exist. There's a non-zero probability of it. Now, if when you assume that they're going to be there, you can factor that risk into your security model and design your architecture. So, okay, let's assume that there's, there's gonna be an exploitable vulnerability somewhere. With that assumption, 
can we design all of our other controls so that let's assume that tomorrow there's another uh, eternal blue exploit that gets dropped on the internet. How can we defend against that? Can we segment our network better? Can we impose better identity and access controls? Can we do some other thing? Um, and that's what we talk about when we talk about defense in depth. You don't just build one defense. You don't just run antivirus. You don't just have a perimeter firewall. You don't just have passwords. You do multiple things so that the likelihood that one control failing catastrophically doesn't bring down the whole environment. And by doing that, you increase the odds that you're going to be better protected. Bobby Kuzma, Core Security, thanks for sharing these insights today. It's incredibly helpful to, to demystify the environment of zero-day exploits. I wonder if you could leave us with a final piece of advice. Uh, it's a doozy, but it's essential. How do we defend against these? Yeah, you focus on the basics. You make sure that you plan for the unexpected. And if you do that, you're not going to be running around with your hair on fire when someone drops one of those zero days in the middle of your network. Well said.